day in the life of a fat person. I wake up and think, what thin lives am I going to ruin today? Then I take all the food from my thin roommate. She doesn't need it. I then steal and eat people's babies. I get really mad when I see thin people exercising. I love how they couldn't do this in an actual, like, walking park. They had to do this in a green screen or something like that, or, like, TikTok's rendition of a green screen, which I believe it just tries to, like, blur out the background and put, like, a another background in there. Yeah, we don't think like this. Uh, thin people don't think that fat people are just, like, running around, stealing babies, eating bananas out of people's hands and stuff like that. We just kind of think you guys are having a hard time with self-control. And maybe you guys don't realize how many calories you're actually eating, which is probably most of the time what you guys are ever problem with. That's it. That's all we think. You guys just have a poor idea of how many calories you guys are eating in one day. That's all we think. You, if you need to eat 2,000, I think you're eating 3,000. And you're probably doing that so frequently that you're able to maintain probably over 300 pounds. Probably. I don't know how tall she is. She might be like 300, maybe even 400. I don't know. It's very ambiguous when I don't know the height. But... We don't think that you guys are out here stealing and eating babies. That's kind of crazy. But I understand why you would think that because you want us to seem like we are the crazy ones. Like we are the anomalistic people when no, we're not. We don't like for the most part, most people don't even care that you're fat. You guys make it a bigger deal than mostly anybody. We just kind of want to exist in a society where people are relatively healthy and we don't have to like, you know, subsidize people that have issues like this. Uh, that you could just wash away with diet and exercise. I mean, it's fine. Like, I'm totally fine with people paying taxes for things that are really, really good and, you know, helpful for society and things like that. But I just wish you guys would take some accountability and try to lose some weight, you know? Like, that would be the ideal thing. I get, like, stairs are hard to walk up. In general, stairs are hard to walk up. Nobody wants to walk up stairs voluntarily unless you're, like, one of those weird people that goes to the gym and that's all you do. How many people, you know how many times I've went to the gym? It's mostly all women though. I don't see many dudes on those stair stepper machines. Most of the dudes don't even do cardio. So all I see, like I go into the gym, I just see like four racks of those stair steppers, all women, all wearing leggings. I don't know what their intentions are. I mean, granted, it's like they're on them for a good amount of time, but they get on them and they just walk out, dude. And you know what? At least they're getting their cardio in. But you know, you know, look, if you want to do your cardio primarily on that machine, it's totally fine, dude. But you know there's other cardio machines too, right? Like there's uh, ellipticals, my personal favorite uh, version of cardio. I know a lot of people think you're gay for using it. You're not gay for using the elliptical. You're totally straight for using the elliptical. Go ahead and use it. But no, we don't think that we're we don't think that fat people are out here trying to eat babies. I get. I just love that like that walk in place too. I love that. I'm really mad when I see thin people exercising. They must stop. True. Then I count all the money I'm stealing from the healthcare system. <laughs> True, dude. Especially over there in the UK. Most definitely. You guys are going through like a big health. Dude, I found out recently like you guys in the UK actually have a higher percentage of people that are obese in, than America, right? I mean, granted, your country doesn't have as many people. So like that number is going to be a little bit different compared to America. I think our country has like, what, 380 million people or something like that? I don't know how many, what your population count is over there in uh, the UK. But... You guys have a higher population of people. That's actually crazy. Yes, America is succeeding. I mean, granted, it's not really succeeding in a good way. Like, we're just kind of being outshined. Like, we're we're succeeding inadvertently. We're succeeding passively through the process of other countries not succeeding. A win is a win. <laughs> a win is a win, dude. Most definitely. A subsidized healthcare is probably very beautiful, depending on how you get it done. Um, but when you have people literally walking in and out, well, let me just hold on now, rolling in and out of the hospital because they're so massive. They have so many health conditions. It is what it is, dude. Um, I go hope you guys have the, the health. I hope you guys have the taxpayer money to subsidize that though. <laughs> then at the end of the day, I watched the movie, The Whale. I don't think fat people really like The Whale though, right? W weren't, weren't, weren't there a lot of people that thoroughly disliked that movie because Brendan Fraser wasn't a hashtag fat person naturally or something like that, even though he could relate to it and he said he was obese many, many times and he actually stuck up for many people that were fat. I watched many interviews with Brendan Fraser and he was like a true gentleman about the movie. He didn't have to say the stuff that he was saying. Like he was actually out here saying like, we shouldn't use obesity as a slur. It's the only unprotected class that we have nowadays. Like he was saying some shit that I feel like a lot of people in the fat acceptance community community probably didn't see those interviews probably didn't notice that he was saying that stuff like it's like that with anything like I don't really pay attention oftentimes to what the actors say in movies and televisions and things like that outside the role because most of the time they have no idea what they're talking about like it occurred to me 
uh, when I was watching any like any of the new Star Wars stuff, right? So I was watching these people say the most blasphemous statements, and I'm just thinking, like, what the fuck is this person talking about, dude? Like, people were m quoting as Anakin Skywalker blew up the Death Star, and I'm looking like, uh, you don't you don't have to watch the movies. Like, it's totally fine. I don't think that the actors need to watch the movies, uh, but just don't talk on them, dude. You don't like it, it's so jarring to hear the actors go like, oh yeah. I think Ray is probably stronger than Obi Wan, and then I think about it and I go, I think I think this woman's actually right. Like, but I, I I don't think that she knows that she's right or how right she is. It's just really sad sometimes when you hear the actors. Like, it is what it is. You don't have to watch the roles or the movies or whatever. Most of the time, these actors have no idea what's going on, and that's completely fine with me. I think that it's if you're an actor and your main job is to just go on the set and act, that's fine with me. I don't care. I don't really care what the actors do. You know, I, I don't need you to know the deep lore about whatever movie you're playing in, as long as you do a good job. It represents me perfectly. I don't know what, what movie I would uh, really recommend fat people watch. Maybe like um, Hairspray, right? I know a lot of fat people like Hairspray from like 2007, 2008 or something like that. The Whale is not, I don't know. Like people were really hating on Brendan Fraser because he had worn that fat suit and they were saying that that, that role should have had went to a actual person of that size which is really crazy because wasn't that guy like 800 pounds or something like that who the fuck is in hollywood that's 800 pounds jesus christ dude maybe that's like harvey weinstein harvesting the, the the child's body like he's eating children himself to become more and more obese but like that's it like there's nobody in hollywood that can even act at that size it's it's such an impractical thing to hire a guy that's 800 pounds to get on set that dude ain't moving from his house you would have to like you have to periodically remove the wall from wherever he lives so they can get him out because there's no way a man of that size is going to be able to fit through a doorway, let alone walk downstairs and go up to a set. No way that's happening, bro. Yeah, sex is great, but have you ever watched a man literally short circuit after he attempts to insult you by calling you fat, thinking it's the sickest burn ever, bro? <laughs> to which you simply reply, and... I don't think this ever happens, dude. In what scenario are is a man even coming up to you and going, you're fat, and just thinking that's a burn? I, I, I don't really count that as a burn anymore because it's too generic. It's way too, it's way too general. It's like somebody calling me Mario. We got to come up with other better things, right? The other day, sorry, two months ago, somebody called me Doc Holiday, and I thought, dude, that's, thank you. Doc Holiday, dude? Are you fucking serious from, from fucking Tombstone? Hell yeah, dude, I'll take that. Who who who, who played this tombstone? Who's that guy, bro? Uh, hot man. I forgot his name, dude. But uh, great actor, amazing actor, beautiful guy. I don't have TB, so that's good. Uh, my lungs aren't currently filling up with blood and you know doing all this stuff. But I will accept that. I will accept the Doc Holiday. I got Nikola Tesla. That's also really good. I like that too. Or a Civil War general. Those are all really good. But Mario, really bad. The worst one I've ever gotten was Hitler. That's really not good, dude. Hitler, the most infamous man in history, and you have no idea what that guy looks like. I get it. During World War One, he had a handlebar mustache. Every guy during World War One had a handlebar mustache, okay? What? What do you want from me, okay? But everybody knows when you talk about Hitler, who are you thinking about? You're thinking about the you're thinking about the landing strip. You're not thinking about handlebar mustache Hitler. You're thinking about the landing strip. So in my opinion, whenever somebody sees mustache, they only always think about the guy with the mustache, which is Hitler, which is really, really sad because he's giving us all a bad reputation, okay? There are mustache men out here doing great things for the community, and Adolf Hitler is out here ruining it for everybody, dude. Absolutely atrocious. I hate it. It's one of the most diabolical things. But most of the time, these people just kind of create their own stories in their heads to try to justify their existence or make it seem like they have a sick burn or like they said something that they thought they ate. Uh, not physically. They didn't actually eat. It's a saying. When somebody says, ooh, you ate, sis, or wow, you slayed. It's like saying like you own somebody, basically. It's a new terminology. I don't understand it either. But basically, um, I don't think this is real. Uh, yeah, no way this was real, dude, especially not after that pause. If a guy goes, I think you're, like, fat, and you go, and, and then there's, like, a, what, 15-second pause? And you smell like old oranges. And I think that you are not a good person. And also, I reported your OnlyFans account to the IRS because I think you should pay more in taxes. And I also think that drum bucket that you ate earlier from KFC, that was diabolical. Did you have to lick the grease off the bottom of the bucket too? That's what I imagine this conversation to go like if she paused for that long after she said and. I would just keep going. What? <laughs> Why would I not just keep going? It would just be endless at that point. What is this hand movement we got here? 
Because you no longer give power to a three-letter descriptor word that society decided to demonize. And then he just sits there sputtering like a faucet. Me no, nobody's doing that, dude. Who, who is this person, first of all? Th what experience is this that you're referencing right now? There's no way this actually happened. You're lying. You're literally lying. There's no way this happened. You don't understand why lady no cry. Why is that like your definition of how men think? Like we just like one dimensional cavemen guys from like the Geico commercials, dude. Even the Geico cavemen were pretty articulate, right? Like they had the ability to reason, think, and articulate words pretty well. So I don't even, what def, where are you getting men that talk like this, dude? What are you talking, what men are you dating that are doing this? Men that are just calling you fat and like sitting on the couch, fuming steam coming out of their ears and going, I mean not believe this. Can't believe fat woman don't take offense to being called fat. What do you? Okay, I guess, dude. I mean, hey, it's a weird flex, but go on. Sputtering like a faucet. Me no understand. Why lady no cry? Why lady no cry? Me use my big idea. Ah, God, it's good. Yeah, tro that's totally something that happened, yeah. Most definitely something that happened. Yeah, that's a weird, uh, that's a weird neck brace you have right there. Where, where, where'd you get this neck brace right here? Oh, that's your neck? Oof. Yeah, this definitely didn't happen, dude. If somebody's main intention was to rash your life, it would not be that hard. It really wouldn't be that hard. And also, somebody sitting there and just calling you fat and having a guy just fuming, I don't think it's ever happened. But I will admit, um, you know, being a part of the men community, uh, the big meat men community, there's a difference. I uh, will agree. There are a few guys that probably would act like this. But then again, like, why are you dating? It seems like you were just dating, like, a, I don't know, like a, a grown man with a nine-year-old mentality. I, I, what, what example is this? Like, why would this ever happen, ever? I would love to know the example. Do you have an example? Like, is this, is this something you're referencing? <laughs> yeah, that's never happened at all. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I wasn't expecting that one, dude. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Oh, God, it's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anime. Hentai. Oh, my God. Uh, things, the things that thin people say to fat people, reversed. Okay, let's see. Excuse me, I just need to tell you, you are so brave for wearing that. I could... I agree, dude. Um, wearing a black bra on top of a white shirt. I agree, dude. Very brave indeed. Everybody knows you're not supposed to do that. It's, uh, it's kind of productive. You're literally impeding it. But then again, she's doing it too, actually. I'm seeing a black bra here too as well. Seems like it's slipping off the side. Do you ever get uncomfortable when you do that? Like, you know when you put on a jacket and you're wearing a hoodie underneath and your, your hoodie sleeve goes up to like up here you never feel uncomfortable like i always find myself whenever i put on jackets i always hold i always hold the thing like i'm spider-man right i'm just like sitting there holding it like this and then i put on the jacket and then i have my hoodie that's over sorry the hoodie is under perfectly uh on the jacket that's like the most optimal thing so that's a hint if you ever think uh you're gonna put on a jacket and a hoodie hold the sleeves in in place while you put on the jacket spider-man that shit whatever spider-man you want to toby Andrew, uh, even, even, um, who's the new one, dude? I forgot his name. Uh, the hotter, the hottest one. Toby is the hottest one. Let's be honest here for a second. Maybe Andrew. Andrew actually, Tom Holland. Tom Holland is, yeah. Oh, man, that guy would be literally a 10 if he was above, what is he, like a 5'5? Five, five? If he was above, if he was above 5'10, he would be <sighs> chef's kiss. By the way, this never happens. Uh, nobody just randomly walks up to fat people. Have you ever been in public? Nobody walks up to anybody anymore, unless you're like an old Asian grandmother trying to scam people, which has happened many, many times um, to me where old grandmothers will walk up to you and try to put like bracelets on you and try to, to like, no, 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 free, free, free. But they're not free because they try to charge you money right after they put it on. You can't take it off because it's so goddamn tight. And you might actually want to charge that woman with assault because now your hand might be physically impeded by the blood flow because of how tight they put it on. Um, but just walk away, you know, like, what is this old grandma going to do? Like, it's not like the Yakuza is going to come out of the fucking bush and just like, no, you must pay now. No, it's a very dishonorable. You must pay this old Chinese side of the grandmother. Like, it's never going to happen. So just walk away. Like, don't even do it, by the way. If you ever go to a big city and there's a grandmother, an old Chinese grandmother with a whole bunch of necklaces on her. And she's trying to tie them on you. She's like, no, I'm okay, dude. I'm literally fine. I don't want, no I don't want any of this, dude. I'm totally fine with that. Um, but yeah, nobody walks up to anybody in public anymore. Everybody's like really, really antisocial nowadays. It's actually an anomalistic thing for somebody to come up to you. There is a 25% chance if somebody does come up to you, they're robbing you. I tell you, you are so brave for wearing that. I could never. Well, your body, you know, you're really embracing all your flaws. 
Okay. Nobody does this, dude. Literally nobody at all. This has never happened. Not even a single time. Thanks. Oh my God, Summer, you have such a pretty face. Thanks. I know. I mean, sheesh. Skincare. Okay. What about the rest of me? Nobody's saying that either, bro. If somebody just randomly compliments your face in public and then you <laughs> you keep fishing, dude, holy shit. What kind of pick me ass shit is that? Can you imagine that? Just a random person like, oh my God, you have... You have such a pretty face, and you're just like, huh, what else? What else? What else do I got? Tell me more about myself. What about my pants? You like the pants? What about the shoes, huh? Tell me about my wrists. Tell me about my rib cage. Do you like my rib cage too? What else do you think is good about me? Oh my god, you look just like that only one thin celebrity that there is. Oh, uh, what's her name? What's her name? That Gwyneth Paltrow, um, Charlize Theron. Uh, Michael B. Jordan. Thin celebrity, you look just like her. Uh, Hayley Bieber! Oh, Hayley Bieber. I thought she was gonna say Halle Berry, dude. Okay? Hey, thin people, can you stop calling yourself big back or fatty when you're just posting yourself eating a normal amount of food? No. Can you back up from the camera, though? Damn, bro, you really up here, dude. You melted my monitor right now. Brush I them want teeth. to share with you the most common risks of weight loss surgery and obvi obviously all surgery has risks most common risks uh hair loss ulcer leaks gastric bleeding bowel obstruction gallstones dehydration acid reflux uh anesthesia related risks chronic nausea and vomiting dilation of the esophagus inability to eat certain foods infection obstruction of the stomach weight gain or failure to lose weight what are you just reading off like the wikipedia page on like bariatric surgery yeah there are risks to this surgery and that should tell you something that people are willing to take on these risks which you know i'm gonna be honest with you dude a lot of people I've met actually had no idea that there were risks to surgeries. And it's actually quite anomalistic. Every time I talk to people and they go, I got the surgery, but I didn't know that I was going to suffer from all this consequences after. I didn't know that I had to eat this particular food. I didn't know this. It's like, like, what are you talking about? Like, did you not research this shit beforehand? Did the doctor not tell you? And they always go, no. I, I mean, the doctor told me stuff, but I thought it was just going to be okay. What? What are you talking about? What is it? Of course it's going to be complicated. You're literally reducing your stomach by like a significant portion, bro. Yes, of course. So, but yeah, so sure, there's a lot of people that are really ignorant when it comes to like getting these bariatric surgeries. But it should tell you something that there are a lot of people going to get these bariatric surgeries because they know that the other side of that coin is way more detrimental compared to what the surgery can supply to them. So I think that that's probably a good case for the surgery. Like thinking about that. And I always would never, I would never recommend anybody doing those surgeries unless it was the last thing, unless you've literally exhausted all the other options. Because so many times people don't realize that you're going to have to like really change your diet. You can't just get that surgery and continue eating like slop. There are a few people that do though. If you look at like Boogie2988 or Wings of Redemption, these guys got the surgery. I think they got them in like Mexico or something like that because it's cheaper and it's like right across the border or whatever. And it's cheaper, right? But um, these guys are still eating like garbage, like all the fucking time. They're still getting Uber Eats, ridiculous Uber Eats orders. And the thing is, like, once you get that surgery and you continue eating shit like that, bro, you can literally burst your stomach. And uh, acid reflex is crazy, like this person said, dude. I mean, these people are suffering on a daily basis, but they love the food and they get satisfaction from the food. They didn't actually solve the problem. They're just more or less putting a Band-Aid on it, but a permanent Band-Aid almost. Like a Band-Aid that's, like, just suffocating around your stomach at any given point in time. It's not so much that the, 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 the weight loss surgery is going to be a solution you need to actually work on the diet in and of itself otherwise you're never going to solve the problem it's 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 you're ridiculously what you're doing at that point all you're doing is like it's a bleeding wound and you're just wrapping it with a gauze and it's still bleeding like profusely and uh you need to actually solve the bleeding problem itself now the long-term side effects are dumping syndrome, low blood sugar, malnutrition, vomiting. Yeah, but what are the consequences of just being obese in general? Like I get, I get what you're saying. You're saying you might as well just live with it if you're like because the consequences of getting the surgery are dire and they're extreme. And I agree, they are very dire and extreme. But you have to understand that the other side of that coin, which is living a life of obesity and never having the ability to like lose weight because it's just not feasible for you when it comes to uh, your diet control and things such and so forth. You do understand that's also a life of terribleness. That's just like a life of, of just perpetually being 
uh, always having problems with your legs, always having problems with your lower back, consistently being tired, your hormones are constantly out of whack. Like you're also having a tremendous amount of problems when you're obese. And like I said, I, I totally understand what she's saying, but it's just, it's such a, it's such a basic bitch point. Ulcers, bowel obstruction and hernias. Dumping syndrome, it's basically what it sounds like. Dump when you got that ass, bro. Yeah, I got that dumping shit too, bro. My shit be thicked up. Dumping syndrome is a medical condition in which your stomach oh. empties its contents into the first part of your small intestine, the duodendum, faster than normal. Dumping syndrome is also known as rapid gastric empty. People with Are you just here to tell us about the negative side effects of this, but not actually go through? It would be better if you said both. Like, hey, yeah, this is bad. But like the other side is also bad. And I can see why somebody might want to do this, right? Uh, there's a ton of consequences to being overweight, health complications and things and such forth. So it's crazy that people are willing to go to these extreme measures to get these particular surgeries. But that should tell you how, given the fact that it's so extreme, the other side has to be also equally extreme, given the fact that people are actually doing the surgery, right? Dumping syndrome experience symptoms like nausea and abdominal cramping. These symptoms happen because your small intestine cannot absorb nutrients from food that has not been digested properly in the stomach. And you basically shit your pants, have diarrhea. 4.6% of people who have the surgery are dead within a year. Why though? Could it be from other unrelated causes? It's like when people say like, people that smoke cigarettes on average don't have heart attacks. And then you go, oh, wow. So like maybe if I smoke cigarettes, then that means I'll, I won't have a heart attack. And then you look into it you're like, oh, that's because they die at like 30. And like most people that get heart attacks are usually in their 60s or 70s. So yeah, it makes total sense, right? It's, it's such a bullshit. Like you just got to read into it a little bit more. Like most of the time when you read a statistic and you just like, oh yeah, this statistic is just right. Like sometimes people will go to me and they'll go, David, white people are actually, you 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 told me that black people uh, on average are getting arrested by police at a much higher rate, right? And you go, yep. And they go, but like white people, I actually just found this out, white people are getting arrested way higher compared to black people. And then you think about it, you go, huh, that's crazy. But then you realize, wait a minute, aren't white people like make, don't white people make up like 37% of the population and black people make up like what, 13? Uh, yeah, I fucking, duh, fucking duh, bro, duh. That's like saying like women on average have a higher risk of having periods compared to men. Yes, dude, I, yes, 100%, it's the same shit here. You gotta look into it though. You can't just say, like, you have a 4.6% chance of dying after you get the surgery. That's like saying, like, oh, hey, bro, you know that one rapper, Tupac? You remember how he got shot? Yeah, um, you ever wonder why he got shot? Maybe it was because he had that nose ring, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know some guys that got shot with nose rings, so, like, maybe you gotta, like, back off nose rings. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's such, it's such a bizarre way of looking at stuff. Like, correlation does not mean causation, right? And another study shows that three- Just listing out studies is beautiful. Three out of every 1,000 people die within 30 days. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Most people regain weight that was lost. Because you're not actually solving the problem. A lot of people that just get that surgery think it's a one and done. It's not a one and done. You have to actually put in the work. You didn't actually solve the problem, which was you not understanding what foods you're eating, the calories that you're supposed to be eating in general. So if you're going into it with the wrong intentions, like anything in life, dude, if you go into anything with the wrong intentions, you're not going to get the results that you want, right? A lot of people go to the gym to impress women. And eventually they go, well, you know what? I'm doing it for my health now, right? So like if you go in there for the intention of like impressing women, that's not, that's the wrong reason. Same thing here. Like you're going into it thinking that this is going to be the be all end all. It's not, dude. You still have to put in a lot of work. You still have to understand calories. You still have to understand a diet. You still have to understand like how you're going to navigate the rest of your life. You can't just go into it and think that nothing's going to change except the, the surgery. After the surgery. So what happens normally, and obviously every single person is different. It's not really a case to not get the surgery. It's just more of a case to be more informed about the surgery. So you could just say that, that, that would be way better. It, 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 you, what this video should actually be is, if you are going to get bariatric surgery, you should be more informed, you should have more research on your side, and you should know what you're getting into before you get the weight loss surgery, instead of just jumping headfirst into the deep end of the pool and just expecting it to solve all your problems without changing anything in general. That's what you should be saying. Not, not a case to not get the surgery. So not everyone is going to have um, bad side effects. Some people are going to be like, I had weight loss surgery. It was the best thing of my life. Now I'm really thin and happy and I've had no side effects and everything's great. You know, there's going to be people who are like that and there's going to be people who are 
um, you know, somewhere in the middle and there's going to be people who have died. Um, so this is not kind of like a blanket. This is happening to everyone, but this is this is what the studies have, are showing us. So what happens generally is that within 12 to 18 months after the surgery, people have reached their lowest weight and then from there that is when the weight starts um, coming back on two years after the surgery 46 percent of people have regained weight and four years after the surgery it's 63 percent presumably year after year that number goes up and up and up chances are like i said it's not really about the weight loss surgery at that point it's really just about can you maintain diet and if you can't then it probably isn't a good idea to even get the surgery to begin with dude if you're not committed and you're not willing to put in the work then there's no point why are you even bothering doing that it'd be better if you didn't do it if you were just gonna like have a shit diet and continue to have a shit diet it's fine like i i don't care personally if somebody has a shit diet it would be better if you didn't have a shit diet because most of these people have like most of these people have people that are relying on them so friends family children uh people in that vein a lot of people are very selfish about that because they they don't realize that even though it is your body and your choice a lot of people are relying on you and i understand it might be easier for you to body slam a couple hershey's ch chocolate bars or you know uh, a couple twix here and there and things such and so forth body slam a quick four thousand calories every day a lot of people don't realize that it, it that's easy that's very easy to do and it takes like a bigger person no pun intended to um not do those things and to actually look at themselves in the mirror and say i have a problem i want to do this not just for myself um, but for everyone else around me. So there's that too, like that to take into account. A lot of these people don't do that. A lot of these people just want to get the one and done quick fix. And we do live in an economy nowadays where everybody needs to get everything right away. And there, you know, is no prolonged, um, what's the, what's the word? Like waiting. There's no waiting for the outcome anymore. Everybody wants to get it right away and they don't want to wait. So everything's got to be snappy, right? But that sometimes is not the optimal thing. Like in certain things it might be, but other things it's not. And I'm not even one of these people that sits there and says like, you shouldn't be eating certain things. If you want to eat candy, you can. If you want to drink a soda, you can. But I just hope that you're not doing those things to such a degree that you're like destroying yourself and your diet. That's all I say. Like if you want to find time in your diet that you want to drink a soda too, that's fine. I don't care. But as long as you're um, taking care of yourself optimally, um, that should be fine. Like it's okay. We all trade short term. We all trade short term def d defects for long. Uh, sorry, short term. Yeah, uh, sh short term satisfaction for long term defects. Like we all do that. It's it is what it is. So if you want to do that and you want to do that from time to time, it's okay. It's totally fine with me. Well, you have as long as you're not taking advantage of yourself. This weight loss surgery is not actually going to make you thin. It will. The issue is that you're not taking. It, again, it's not it's not so much of the the problem of the, the the weight loss surgery. It's more so about the mentality that you're presenting during and after the weight loss surgery. Linda Bacon says bariatric surgery would be more appropriately labeled high risk disease inducing cosmetic surgery than a health enhancing procedure. This is why I say, like, if you're going to get weight loss surgery, I hope that you're exhausting every other outcome or every other, like, resource you have. So that would be diet and exercise would be number one. If you can't lose weight that organic way, then, yeah, sure, you should probably pursue it. But most of the time people can pursue diet and exercise to lose weight. It's just harder. It is harder. It is harder. But the thing is, too, when you lose weight via the bariatric surgery, you're still going to have to do that. You're still going to have to diet and exercise. And it might actually be more strenuous than it would have been if you didn't do the bariatric surgery because now you're just limited to because you have that surgery right before you don't you're not limited so i would always say like try to organically lose weight yourself like try to actually go out of go out of your way practice this skill and consistently do it as well because it's not so much about doing it for a week anybody can do a diet for a week dude anybody right dude anybody can pull it off for a week um but it's more so like the time it takes afterwards i always say it's like anybody can eat vagina for five minutes can you do it for 20 can you do it for an hour right dude that's what a skill really lies bro it's about the consistency the endurance can you go to distance right it's about uh it's more so like a marathon than it is a sprint so i hope that whatever diet that you're on is something that you can continue to be on for potentially your whole life it's okay you have fuck ups it's okay that you have times where you're eating terrible stuff that's fine but as long as the overall idea of the diet is maintained you should be fine and the same thing is going to occur if you have the, the bariatric surgery, it's probably going to be even more, though, because you have to. If you don't, then you're, you might be life-threatening yourself. A study came out 
two years ago about the increased rates. Quote from this study, investigators reported a four-fold increased risk of death by... These people probably have a lot more issues, though. Like, I, I, this is very easy to just be like, oh, they have an increased risk of this because they got the surgery. Most of these people are already in really bad head spaces. You know, it, it is what it is. It's like these people already have an addiction to food or maybe they think that this would have been the, the preferable outcome, but they're not getting the outcome that they want because they thought it would be one thing. But it's obviously not that expectations were unusually high. So I wouldn't necessarily just put this on the fact that they got the weight loss surgery and somehow that made them more likely to end themselves, but probably more so that these people already had major health, major mental health issues to begin with and that they thought that these the bariatric surgery may have alleviated that. But it's actually not the thing, kind of like when people think. Um, kind of like when people think that they'll be better off if they have another person in the relationship with them or somebody that they can emotionally dump all their trauma on, but then they find out that nobody's willing to do that and or that's actually not a solution to their problem. It's actually within. They actually have to figure out what's wrong with them within. It's not stop trying to externalize your issues and put it on somebody else. It's like that. Like these people all have issues in general. So they probably, it's probably has something to do with that more so than the weight loss surgery, right? Like that would, wouldn't that make more sense? Like somebody's going to get the weight loss surgery and just like, oh man, that sucks. I'm just going to have to like literally end myself right now. No. Among patients who underwent weight loss surgery, people who have this surgery, they have uh, a doubled, doubled risk of substance abuse. Most of these people probably already have a substance abuse issue in the sense of like what they're already eating. Like they're already addicted to whatever they're eating. So I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't doubt these people are going to like probably go to something else or other things like that. Yeah, of course. Problems. And so these are people who previously didn't have. It just depends on what you mean by, pre okay, first of all, dude, if somebody is thinking about get the, getting the bariatric surgery, they're probably very overweight. They're probably very obese, okay? Anybody that's like 300, 400, 500 pounds, even more than that, of course, is going to have a major, 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 major issue with abusing food. That's obvious. That is obvious, bro. They might be looking at food as like satisfaction. They might be looking at food as like some kind of uh, happiness marker. They might be using food as like other things as well. But um, to sit there and say these people didn't have issues like this before is crazy, bro. That's obviously not the case. If you're looking at getting the surgery, you have a major issue with food. So to sit there and think that these issues just start to arise because you got the surgery is ignorant that's crazy bro hell no what are you talking about that's obviously not true just think about that baseline dude you think the people that are four five six hundred pounds you don't think they had any abusive issues when it comes to food and now you think that just because they got the surgery somehow they just started like oh i'm just gonna do drugs and i'm just gonna start doing other things that were no dude they've always had these issues any issues with with any substance abuse yeah but they had issues with other things right just because it wasn't substance abuse doesn't mean it wasn't other things right so weight loss surgery i don't know man it's just too easy for these people to just say words and not go off on reasons why they think this might be occurring some people will lose weight and keep it off we don't really know what percent what we do know is that most people won't but imagine if, you know, you're thinking, as I did, going into diet. It's so disingenuous, bro. This entire video is, like, just pseudoscience, They're Just saying, like, reading a stat and going just, I mean, look at that. Isn't that crazy that most people just don't lose weight and most people are literally becoming drug addicts and most people are becoming this and they're just, they're, they're dying now, too? Like, I mean, why would you even think about it? I mean, yeah, you might be able to do it and you might be able to lose weight, but, like, not really. I mean, let's be honest here for a second. You're probably going to regain it. You're probably going to become a crackhead. Like, why are you even bothering? It's just, like, it's such a disingenuous video, bro. And like I said, it'd be better to actually solve the actual issue, which is your food, the food problems. The, the issue is that you don't understand how many calories you should be eating and you probably have a poor relationship with food. That would be the actual issue you have to solve. And then also do more research on the actual surgeries that you're going to get. Well, I'm going to be with diets, 95% fail. I'm going to be the 5% because I really want this. I'm really desperate to be thin. And so let's pretend that you are that, that percent that is able to lose weight. The question that I would want to consider is, but at what cost? Health, um, probably trying to become, oh, I see what you're saying. I see that there are probably things that are bad and things that are going to happen. That's why I say, like, don't probably don't do bariatric surgery unless you know it's going to be successful for you and you know that you're that type of person that's going to be able to commit to it. Otherwise, 
just try to lose weight organically. But if you do the bariatric surgery, I hope that you're a person that's going to be able to tolerate all that stuff. I always think about the, the unicorns who do lose weight, what their life is like what they're having to do to maintain that weight loss. How are they eating? How are they relating to food? Are they forcing themselves? They're probably doing the same thing that you're doing, right? Except you're doing it in reverse. These people will have to, if you get that surgery, you have to change your diet up. That's just what it is. You have to change it up in a very drastic way. You're not gonna be able to eat the things that you used to be able to eat, just flat out, okay? Uh, but these people are eating whatever they want, whenever they want, which is also equally not good. Um, you know, there's room for in your diet for things that are unhealthy and bad for you. But these people are taking advantage of that. Else to move their body and bodies in ways that they don't like. Um, what's their mental health look? Like? Moving, moving your bo moving your body in ways that you don't like. Like what? Like going to the gym and walking? You do realize walking is optimal, right? I understand that you may not like walking, but is pretty good to walk, okay? If you have legs and you have the ability to move them, you should. Uh, what's their mental health like? Probably, it just depends, I guess. Like, you guys also have really, really bad mental health. There's a reason why these outcomes are occurring. It's because they have un unresolved mental health issues to begin with. They don't just start to arise after the surgery. Like, are they happy? Maybe. Are they fulfilled? Are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Are the people that are considering getting the surgery, are they happy? Are they fulfilled? Are they having issues? I don't know, dude. It seems kind of weird that you're not, you're not talking about that stuff. Do they like their body? Do they hate themselves? It's your choice. You can do anything that you want to your body. All these, all these questions can equally be applied to people that are fat and also have major issues with food that are considering getting the surgery. Of course. If not more so. But looking at the statistics around it, it's not actually effective. Like I said earlier, it's very easy for somebody to read a statistic and think this is obvious. Like this, this is what I have to say about this, right? But not read past the statistic. Sometimes a statistic just gives you the raw number, but you have to look into it to actually interpret what that number means, okay? In the same way that like that cigarette thing where somebody said like, oh yeah, people that smoke cigarettes have a lower, a lower chance of like, dying from heart attacks that's because they died way before heart attacks could even take place because their health was already majorly compromised right it's the same thing there dude it's it's like you can read the statistic and it can help you in certain areas but unless you're willing to read into it more it's really not gonna help you i mean it's probably good for her because she could just read the statistic and just blast her bullshit and people will go wow i never thought about it like that but if you actually read past that statistic you're gonna find things that you probably didn't think that were gonna help you out like i wouldn't be surprised that a lot of the things that she's reading right now are actually just factually wrong in terms of what she's saying for a lot of people they can't reverse it especially if you've had if you've had your stomach amputated that's gone in the bin that's long gone you can't grow your stomach back unless you're wolverine it's irreversible is that worth a one in three chance for you to be smaller could but be also have unknown side effects could be i don't know i don't know you do know this entire video is you i i hate it when people you have a whole video dedicated this is literally called will weight loss surgery make th make you thin and healthy and you're talking about all the defects and all the problems with getting weight loss surgery and all the mental illnesses and all this other stuff you haven't even talked about anything regarding being fat like obviously because that's not your incentive here and then at the end of it you go i just don't know like i don't know i'll leave that up to you guys even though it's like when somebody goes oh yeah i, I mean uh I would never call this person uh, a fucking bitch. I would never call this person an asshole. I never. Call, I would never say anything bad or disgusting about how their mom was gobbling me down. I would never say anything about this deplorable, disgusting human being. I would. I would never say that. That's basically what you're doing. You're just saying everything, and then you're topping it off with. I mean, I don't know, though. I, I mean, even though I just said all that stuff and I'm going to let you guys, d you know, determine that stuff, even though I'm literally trying to t tell you guys exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You do know. Stop acting like that. You know? No. There was once a time in American history where being fat was associated with being healthy. And there was a time in American history where slavery was A-OK. -okay. What's your point? I've done videos on fat men's clubs before, but there was a time in American history where having a fat- Dude, taking a picture like this in a chair randomly with a cigar in your hand? I don't know, there's something about it, dude. It's just something about this, like, stance, bro. The double cupped, uh, suit jacket, dude. I love it, man. There's something about this guy, bro. I don't know, I feel like he's a- He's like a business mogul or something like that, dude. That body was considered a sign of prosperity and vigor. 
and standards for women also included having thick legs. Because we didn't have food, dude. I, like, it's obvious. We didn't have food, so therefore, if you were fatter, you look like you had food, so it was more attractive. It wasn't exactly, like, a beauty standard on the physical sense. It was a beauty standard on what it meant behind the fact that you were fat. Thick arms, a full face. It was thought that having a fuller figure indicated that one could eat well and... Yeah, that's exactly what it meant, yes. But in a time now where food is relatively cheap and accessible... We don't need to do that anymore because we have food and it's there and it's always there and you can get it whenever you want to. And because of that, you should abstain from buying it since it's you're taking advantage of it. Therefore, stave off infections or disease. Yeah, but then when you gain so much weight, your body cannot do those things anymore. There's a healthy middle ground, right? This when Nobody would look at this woman and go... You know, she's she's obese. Like, she's fucking massive. She's so Nobody's looking at her. But if you're so fat that your, your physical performance of your body is being impeded by the fact that your body is being taxed on a consistent basis, be just trying to keep you alive. I mean, I've literally talked to women that have had their menstrual cycles completely shut off or had to turn off for like three or four months at a time. I've met dudes that have zero sex drive because they're so fat that their penises just stop working. It's it's obvious, dude. Like, your your body is on life support on a continuous basis. But that changed as fatness began to be associated with poverty and, frankly, being a person of color. I think it changed because we had an increased access to food. I think obesity started becoming a really big issue in the 70s and 80s, right? That's when we started to see a lot of people become really big really, really quickly. Now it's just normal. Now it's just really normal. Like, pre-1970, it was like an oddity to see somebody that was above 300 pounds. Nowadays, it's normal, okay? We have access to so much food nowadays. We have access to so many uh, so many cheap and accessible foods. Because of that, I don't think it has anything to do with you being a woman or uh, poor or black. It has more so to do with the fact that you're just making poor decisions based off the dietary foods that you do have. So the standards began to shift, particularly for affluent white women who wanted to distance themselves from body types that were considered unsavory. I wonder where she's getting this from, dude. I think most of the time they're reading from that Fearing the Black Body book, which is all hogwash, by the way. It's very obvious to me that they – you want to you wanna throw in the identity politics because it's very easy for somebody to just claim racism or it's very easy to claim sexism because if you could say that, then you basically dismiss anybody that disagrees with you because you're just calling them a racist or a sexist. It's very easy to do that. Um, happened to me recently actually. So I can see why this person would say that. It's very easy to go to that front. But wouldn't it be a little bit more accurate to just say that food has just become really, really accessible? Therefore, it, because it's so accessible and cheap, you should probably abstain from buying it to, to the degree that you're literally destroying yourself from the inside out. Wouldn't that be a little bit more logical? All of this works together to feed into a culture that is obsessed with dieting and weight loss. You're, you're, okay. She's gaslighting into thinking that the real reason why weight loss is a thing is because it has something to do with racism or sexism, okay? The implication would be if you lose weight, you're directly tying yourself with racism or sexism, which is crazy, okay? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be looking at it as like a racism, sexism topic, dude. If you want to better yourself and physically be more physically adept, it's okay to lose weight. Don't think of yourself as a – like it's, it's, such a, it's such a bitch tactic to say this shit, bro. Oh my god, dude. This is actually really, really evil. Like evil, evil, evil statements. Us. A comment that I hear from a lot of people when I talk about reasons why someone might want to lose weight is that, well, if I lose weight, then people will treat me better. And I also really don't like the way she's talking. Like, it almost kind of seems like, uh, I don't want to tone please. It sounds like she's talking to me like I'm in kindergarten or like elementary school, early elementary school. That really condescending tone, like I'm lesser than you, which made sense because I was a child and my teacher was not a child, an adult, and had authority over me but here i am as an adult you have no authority over me i hope that you could just talk to me like a regular person bro i you know i don't know why you have to talk to me like this but maybe that's just the way she talks in general i don't like it though and honestly there's some validity to that there is a tremendous validity to that people treat you better because you look more healthy you look like somebody that's more approachable if you're fatter a lot of people don't want to be around people that are literally dying and uh, suffering on a tremendous basis, usually daily. So a lot of people just don't want to be around that. And that's totally fine. I wouldn't want to be around somebody that was dying too or huffing and puffing, just simply walking upstairs. Not very healthy. 
So yeah, 100%. People are more attracted to people that are also have more health cues. So there's that as well. So yeah, of course. Right? We know that we live in a society that does not like fat bodies. Yeah, because our society doesn't have the appropriate tools necessary in order to facilitate a lifestyle of sedentariness okay like we have stairs we have uh we have elevators and things like that that are definitely going to help people navigate the world better um that are fatter but we still live in a, a predominant like very physically dominated society so the reason why we don't we don't advocate for people to be fat it's because it's literally a detriment to society and it's also a detriment to you yourself because if you have to live in the society it's very easy to adapt yourself to the society rather than making the society adapt to you it's a never ending struggle of trying to make everything better than everything better for you or fat people dude i, I it's it's externalizing your problem 101 these people it's like master manipulation tactics here never blaming yourself but always blaming someone else and in this case we're blaming society and it's never going to change like you can't just sit there for the whole the whole of your life and complain that society is what's inadequate and it's not you when it would be very easy for you to change for society in comparison to like going in congress and trying to trying to make big ex epistemic changes to try to uh you know make the world more navigable for people of of, of plus size capacities that's crazy if you're big it's going to be hard for you to do anything in general you should be happy that you have the ability to be big i mean you're in a very privileged uh standpoint to be fat and and, and have that ability but you have to understand it's going to be tough and also, it may not even be a good thing to continuously make things more accessible for fat people because all you're doing is advocating for people to just be health, uh, unhealthier and unhealthier. Like, it's there's always work to be done. There's always stuff to do more so. But it just seems like you guys are always trying to externalize your problems and never look inward. It's harder to live in a fat body when people are constantly... But it's, I, I, I think it's very interesting when they say, like, when people. It's harder to live in a fat body in general because you're not gonna be able to do the things that you would have been able to do if you were thinner. And sure, you can blame it on the fact that stairs exist or people just don't like fat people because maybe they feel like it's not healthy for that person to be big and they don't like the fact that they have to look at somebody like that or whatever. By the way, you can't really control that, by the way. It is what it is. I know that this person can easily just go, the reason why fat people don't like, sorry, the reason why thin people don't like fat people is not because they themselves believe that, but because somebody taught them to dislike that fat person. Sure, that might be true, but that doesn't change the fact that most people just don't like uh, seeing fat people, being around fat people, because those people tend to take up more space, those 10 people tend to take up more time, more everything. Um, they're constantly complaining, they have tons and tons of issues. A lot of people just don't wanna be around that. And I don't blame them, that's fine. You know, it is what it is. That's their personal beliefs. But it, to sit there and say like, the, that's the reason why you're living a tough life is very, 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 very ignorant. And like, I know you're being purposely ignorant. You know the real reason. It's because you're unhealthy. Like fat bodies. It's harder to live in a fat body when people are constantly telling you that it's bad and wrong and that you should want to change it. I never want to fault people for wanting to do what they can to not experience stigma. Well, you should be encouraging people to lose weight since that's like literally a detriment on their body. I understand what you're, she's basically saying like, I know why you choose to lose weight. It's because you don't want to, people to make fun of you. I think the majority of the reasons why people choose to lose weight, it's probably because they want to become healthier and they want to become more attractive. Those two reasons predominantly. It's not because they, they don't want to experience the stigma. That might be like an underlying reason in the sense of like maybe they realize that stairs are a problem or the elevator access is not always going to be there or they're not going to be always able to like, you know, walk upstairs and be out of breath. Like they're going to have these issues. Obviously, they're probably thinking about that past but most of the people that are doing that come to the come to the idea that I'm fat, I'm having these issues myself, and I need to change it. That's most of the time. But instead, this person's going, you're losing weight because of you're being bullied. That's not the fucking case. I'm sure that that's happened to, a, a, I'm sure there are people out there that can say that, but it's not the main reason. It's because you're unhealthy. But one thing to consider is this. She's gaslighting like crazy, bro. Is any amount of weight loss going to be enough? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it depends on how much weight that you are when you start, of course. Like, if you're 110 pounds, you're good. You don't need to lose weight. You might need to gain weight, depending on how much you should be, uh, how tall you are. But if you're 400 pounds, 
any weight loss would be good. Uh, yeah, for the most part. I mean, obviously, don't do it unhealthily, but you should be losing weight to make yourself better or healthier because your life matters, bro. You should want to lose weight. You should want to become healthier, and you should want better for yourself and people around you. Of course, though, bro. Of course, yes. There is a pinnacle of weight loss, dude. And guess what? Once you hit that pinnacle, you're good. You could just maintain, and you're fine. Consider is this. It's not even a far-fetched idea. What do you mean, like, is there enough weight loss? Yes. What the fuck? Yeah. Is any amount of weight loss going to be enough? Especially if you are a woman, your body is always going to be scrutinized. It's a terrible way of looking at it. They're, she's basically saying like, regardless of what you do, people are going to judge your body. So why would you even try to begin with? Why would you even go there? Like that if that if that's really what you believe, then nobody then women just shouldn't do anything physical in general because it doesn't matter what women will do, they'll always be judged by everything regardless of that. That's such a stupid thing to say, bro. That's like somebody saying don't prioritize skincare because somebody's gonna make us fun of your skin regardless. No, you should. It doesn't matter. Sometimes people just say stupid shit. It's okay, dude. It's fine. If you're a woman and people are scrutinizing you, at least you have one less thing to worry about. That should be the that should be the end all be all. Are you healthier compared to where you were before? People are judging you, but that shouldn't be the main reason why you lose weight. It should be internal. This person is literally externalizing all of their problems, and they're basically saying, well, because you're always going to be judged, it doesn't matter if you lose weight or not. That's why you shouldn't be losing weight for this reason externally. It's cool that you want to impress other people. It's cool that you want to be more attractive for other people, but the majority of the time, you should be losing weight to make yourself, to make one's health healthier. That should be the main reason. And I feel like this person gaslighting us for this entire video is choosing to ignore that key fact instead they want to focus on bullshit especially if you are a woman your body is always going to be scrutinized by people ultimately i just wish we lived in a world where people did not feel they had to change their appearance to not be treated poorly too bad too bad, too bad. You're going to have to change yourself depending on what's happening, dude. If you want a job and you want to be an elite runner, guess what you're going to have to do? Lose some fucking weight. And you're going to have to be good at running. You want to be a basketball player, you're going to have to be tall. And sometimes you can't be tall. If you want a job where you're standing up for eight hours a day, guess what? 400 pounds ain't going to cut it, dude. You got to be at least 200 to get this job. I mean, sure, you can get a job if you're 400 pounds, but you're probably not going to be performing to the same degree that a person would be if they weren't that size. It's just bullshit. Like, you, ha you do have to change yourself in order to be – you should have to better yourself – and or sometimes change is very important, okay? Like, I understand what this person is saying, but it's not even a good, it's not even a good thing. Like, you're basically just saying people shouldn't have to change. Why not? P every Change is not bad. If you're the same per if you're the same person you were when you were 20 compared to the, the person that you were when you were 30, that's not good. That's terrible. You should be a different person. You should have different ideologies. You should have different ways of thinking about stuff. You should have different, you should have more information. You should be more knowledgeable, more experienced, right? That should be the difference, not not the same person. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This person is terrible. Um, we're going to end the video here, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate it very much. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in chocolate because chocolate is beautiful and amazing. I know a lot of people like the dark chocolate. I don't fuck with it, dude. I personally like the milk chocolate. I know it's not good for you. I know it's bad for you. But what are you going to do about it, dude? I mean, I suck on the – I suck on it. I suck on bars of – I put it in my mouth and I enjoy it. No – I suck on dark chocolate and I suck on milk chocolate as well and white chocolate. Nothing gay. Uh, and there's nothing gay about that, though. There's not, not in a gay way or anything like that. I know a lot of people might look at that as a gay thing, but it's not. I know you probably do it, too, and that's fine. It's not gay. It's not gay at all, even if you think it's gay. It's not. But anyway, guys, um, you're beautiful. You're fantastic. You're awesome. You're so incredibly intuitive, and I love the way that you solve problems. I love the way you could think. I love the way that you have the ability to comprehend stuff and make changes in your life in a very optimal way. That's amazing. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. If you want to check out my social medias, it will be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.